Welcome to the Vetiver Vibes podcast. We're your hosts, Nikki Frazier and Rachel Dean, certified clinical aromatherapists. We are excited to have you here on today's episode where you know that you'll get the best essential oil scoop. This episode is brought to you by Essentia, a leading online school for aromatherapy. If you want to learn more about using essential oils safely at home, check out the courses at www.schoolofessentia.com. Hi, welcome to this week's episode of Vetiver Vibes. Nikki Fraser here with Sue Todd, and we are excited to dive into reflexology. Sue Todd is a retired dental hygienist, reflexologist, reflexology instructor, and author. She is an advocate for gratitude practice. She is passionate about learning and sharing what she learns. This has evolved into Sue sharing her passion on formats like this, as well as motivational seminars. I've had the pleasure of knowing Sue for quite a few years now, um, seeing you actually speak at the CFA conference also a few months ago, uh, and just I love connecting with you, and we really want to have you on to talk about reflexology because we know it is a big passion of yours, and many of our listeners, as much as we love aromatherapy, we're also into other holistic modalities. I myself am trained in reflexology, so is Rachel, um, so we really want to have you on and chat all things. Things reflexology. So welcome. Well, thank you so much for inviting me. I literally, um, <clears throat> I was kind of easy. You said, do you want to? And I said, I do. <laughs> so <laughs> that's about how it went. So I'm delighted. Thank you again for inviting me. Yeah. So we always like to start off with one of the hardest questions um, because we are aromatherapy based. What is your favorite essential oil? Well, and I, don't even think I put in my intro that I was also trained as an aromatherapist. Yes, you are. <laughs> and um, my favorite one is probably one of the first ones I was introduced to, probably one of the simplest, but still my go-to. You probably already know what it is because I've said it before, and it's grapefruit. Nice. It um, never fails to make me smile. It gives me a sense of inner happiness it elevates my mood and I cannot eat grapefruit. Palate wise, it's not happening. Um, let's just say there was an episode in my twenties <laughs> with <an> alcohol <laughs> and grapefruit juice. So, That's but um, as an essential oil, it was always front and center. If I was doing perfuming, it's always my top note of choice. Nice. More so even than the other citruses. So grapefruit's my my go-to every time. Awesome. I love that. I can't eat grapefruit either. It just, I don't like, it's too, it's not, is it's it too bitter, bitter. sour, something. It's, it's too, ugh. Yeah. I remember I have distinct memories of my aunt loving it and trying to feed it to me as a child too. And I was like, ew, no, but I love yeah, but they the put a tablespoon also. of sugar on top of it. You know what I mean? She like, didn't actually, she oh. didn't. Um, oh. No, we don't. Um, no, but yeah. So I hear you're on the, on the fruit itself being not a big fan, but the oil is absolutely amazing. You're right. So how did you get into reflexology? Okay, so I have some interesting stories here. <clears throat> First time I ever saw reflexology being done, I was 19. I was a dental assistant at the time and pretty full of myself. <laughs> <laughs> and we were, there were a bunch of us, different generations, and we were all at a wedding. And one of the fellows that was with us, I didn't realize had a heart condition and he was just young and we were all out in the lounge <clears throat> and one of the other women was working on his feet. And I just looked at her like, like big you for one thing. <laughs> right. And I said, what are you doing? And she says, I'm working on his heart. Well, she was working the heart reflex. And mm -hmm. I just thought, coo, coo, coo right? It's like not in the feet. Crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. And I just, but it stayed there. And then fast forward, I was in my thirties. I'd had my second baby and <clears throat> I don't know, I thought of reflexology and I said, I'm going to get a book. And it was a book of, uh, do reflexology for this condition, that condition, this condition. And I picked the one for weight loss. Cause I just had my second baby and I had my husband I do this. And he hit a spot on my foot that he's lucky 
he pulled away because the reaction was just to kick him. And I'm like, what was that? It was so painful. And it was my bladder reflex. Okay. And for the next 24 hours, if I use the washroom, you couldn't see to the bottom of the toilet because my urine was so cloudy. So at that point, I was a dental hygienist, you know, and I'm like, okay, this is interesting because I'm seeing an actual effect here of yeah. what happened. And so that's when I really got hooked into being curious about it. And before long, I had signed up for a course. And once I decided I wanted to become one, everybody I knew knew how to become a reflexologist. So divine intervention. Effect. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. funny how that happens though, that you do once you see, yeah. once you see, once it's you do meant something, to be, it happens. it's around. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that story. I love that story. And I love looking back sometimes uh, to our past selves and first introductions and things like that, where, where seeds are planted and being like, huh, interesting where those seeds are planted. And I'd have to say that the majority of my reflexology students got into it because they experienced some type of reaction that way themselves mm -hmm. or were close to people who experienced it and were so vocal about it that their curiosity was piqued. Awesome. Now, I know you are trained also as an aromatherapist. Do yep. you ever marry the two modalities together? You know what? I am I actually get a little snarky about that because again, I'm kind of a purist. Yep. And you know, students would ask me that and I'd say, "Okay, let's say you're going to a doctor and he says, "You have this condition. Here's six medications." They're all going to do the same thing, but we're going to use six. Well, how do you know which one worked? Mm -hmm. Right? So if a client's coming to me for reflexology for neck pain, if I give them all kinds of other stuff too, and they go, I felt better. I want to come back. How do you replicate that same thing the next time? Yeah. So at most, if I saw a client was really suffering I would stick with the physical modality and I might send them home with either a sample pain blend yeah, or um, uh, what else did I use? Pain blend or sleep. Usually those were the two, the two babies. Yeah. So, but again, I would say to them, focus on how you feel after this. If you can wait 24 hours to introduce the aromatherapy. Okay. Right. I, I just, how do you know what worked if you don't give one thing time to work? Yeah. Now, if it was a repeat client, let's say, <clears throat> would you then be more at ease yes. introducing it? Yes. Okay. But again, a repeat client, meaning you've given it more than one session to work. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Right. Someone who's come in and they're at this point, they're more maintenance and they're just coming in, you know, let's say once a month, maintenance, yeah. relaxation, um, nothing is yeah burning quote unquote or, for or depending on what it is I might recommend like if theirs is all um oh TMJ mm -hmm. right T temporal mandibular joint dysfunction I might say why don't you try facial reflexology next time instead then we're focusing yeah. in the area yeah so it's not just bringing in a completely different modality, but there's enough within the field of reflexology to explore as well. Yes. Or people who I will never come to see you as I hate getting my feet done. Well, that's what hand reflexology is for. Right. Or face reflexology. Like yeah. Depending again, because, you know, if a client says, hi, I'd like to come in, I have a headache. I'm not going to offer facial reflexology. No. Because they're in an active headache and I can exacerbate it. That's where I'm going to the feet or the hands. So I love that. No, I love that. Very, very good points. So I'm going to assume then that you don't usually marry it with any other modalities type. You don't recommend adding in <clears throat> any other modalities I think, like I Reiki. Think mixed or... modalities often occur, especially in reflexology um, from a financial standpoint. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can get this client here and they're willing to pay for like the special of the two for one, but it's really a bit more money. Um, I think a lot of reflexologists, and I understand why, are driven by financial 
it's like even the super short sessions I'm not a fan of. But yeah. my thing with mixed modalities is if a client's coming to you for relaxation being the primary one, reflexology provides that client's brain and body with a ton of information to deal with. You know, the proprioceptive feedback and everything. And that client's brain is going to shut down after about an hour. So to me, everything else is kind of like, it's just the garbage is overflowing. I'd rather see that client come in in three or four days and do the other thing that they want to try so I can hit the stress mechanism again. Okay. To me, I'm I'm a more a fan of frequency than all yeah. in one. Okay. Awesome. So there's a lot of things in there that have me wanting to ask more questions and dive Go for deeper. it. Um, so let's first start with, for those who aren't really familiar with reflexology, first let's dive into what exactly is reflexology? So essentially, there are points on your feet that correspond to every part of your body. Now, interestingly enough, you know, we have foot maps for that. But the newest research in reflexology and a lot of the the people who have been around a long time are now saying, forget the map. Really? Listen to the feet. Mm. Right? Like so <clears throat> because there's new research that there might be a fascial component. And, you know, we know that the maps are not 100% accurate. I'd say 75%. I'm still a fan of the map for educating your client. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times if they come in with an issue in their health record, and you hit a sore spot on their foot and it corresponds, it's a great selling point. Yeah. Right now. <clears throat> sorry, I'll let you finish that. No, 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 go ahead. I was going to say now, because there's also different maps out there though. So how does that, because there's Chinese reflexology, um, traditional Chinese medicine with reflexology. Which is then, based more on acupuncture. Yes. Um, right. So which the, maps are different. How, what are your it's thoughts It's one on of the that? things like foot reflexology, the maps, if you're looking at foot reflexology that's being done in England and Canada and the US, I'd say we have at least a 75 to 80% yeah. similarity. Yeah, I agree with that. And I'm okay with that. We might, you know, solar plexus might be in zone one on their chart and it's in zone three on mine. I have, a, I have an explanation for that. Mm -hmm. um, like I said, it's a great tool for showing your clients, see how the sore spots on your feet match up with these potential problem areas in your body. But when I was writing my facial accusone reflexology course, talk about map variety there, ridiculous. Like really? the nose is the spleen, the heart or your bum. How can I Those sell- Those are drastically different exactly. areas. Oh exactly. Goodness. Okay. So I said, okay, no, you know what? I cannot use maps for this. But one thing that was the same was acupressure points and Indian Marma points. Yes. Um, we and, do, we have an Ayurvedic Indian head massage course and we talk about Marma points and that, and those are, those are the same. Yeah. And Marma the thing is, is a lot of the referral areas in reflexology, you know, the zones mm -hmm. are actually kind of based on acupuncture meridians because they'll yeah. go, oh, the eye, but it also affects the kidney. Well, you've stolen that from acupuncture, sorry, right? Yeah. So to me, zone theory and reflexology is just a great way to help you find a reflex, Yeah. right? It's here and here, it's a map. It's giving you an actual geo geographical map to find something. So, but as a theory of how it works, not convinced, no theory has been proven. Kevin Coons is working hard on that right now with all of his MRI studies. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> who knows? But um, yeah, I don't even remember what the question was. Um, oh, what is reflexology? And <laughs> we just went way off. <laughs> yeah, I do that a lot. <laughs> oh, so, so do I. So I love focus it. Focus <laughs> pressure technique. Right, right. And um, essentially, I can touch a spot on your body and trigger the corresponding organ in your body to return to balance. Results are individual. Yes. What happens for one person will not necessarily happen to another person, especially if you really, really, really want it to happen for that person, then for <laughs> sure it's not going to, because that's mm -hmm. Murphy's law lives big in reflexology too. Yeah. 
Yeah, no, I love that. Um, and you can, can you touch a little bit more on the benefits of it? Um, for well, di- like, why would someone come in and what could be the, could be those benefits for people? So we have an acronym called react, right? So mm-hmm. the first one is it reduces stress and everybody, okay, it reduces stress. No, no, no. Hold, pull back. That's a huge one because up to 85% of every disease process we have is either caused by stress or impacted by it. So even genetic diseases have a stress component. So if we can diminish that stress mechanism, we're doing wonders for people to heal. Yep. And I'm going to say this, we are not healers. We are helping people to heal themselves. Yes. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. And so stress is huge. And I have seen it time and time again in my classroom. Um, like Pavlov's dogs, the first time, oh, thank you, touch my, my feet. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And by the last class, the minute someone touches them, they're gone. They're like yeah. just in the zone. And it's phenomenal, the results. The second mm-hmm. thing that it does is it enhances circulation. Okay. No, that's another big one because you've got an hour. If your circulation goes out, you got an hour and then you're dead. Right. So circulation is big. And with that circulation comes the um, improved metabolism. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had to let a client get up partway through a session so they can go purge something. Yeah. Right. Um, Assist metabolism. Yeah. It complements other modalities. But again, because I'm a purist, you're only getting one modality today. And um, it just does tons of other stuff. You know, if you are training to be a reflexologist, you are going to, especially if you have kids, the bonding that can happen during a reflexology session before they go to bed at night yeah, is phenomenal. Um, the bonding between partners, of course, it's the reflexologist doing all the work, right? So you have to base, you have to... Um, protect yourself too. you like, don't yeah. work if you're too tired, but yeah. the, the benefits are really phenomenal. Um, my kids were raised. I took the course when my kids were four and two and they're 30 and 28 now. And we just didn't have medical interventions. I wasn't against them. They had an issue. They went to the doctor, but I could usually head something off at the pass with yeah. some reflexology. Nice. which has turned them into the worst ones for taking medications now that they're older. Like, yeah. Honestly, I shot myself in the foot there. <laughs> but I mean, if they're finding holistic modalities to help it, then, and it's not they're, needed the to begin with. The problem is they're not finding holistic modalities to yeah, help. Okay. They're just mom. <laughs> mom is a holistic modality, right? Come, come to my place and give me a reflexology now, please. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's, I remember my oldest was about 10 and I, I like, I was there and he wasn't feeling well. And he had this, I said, just, just, just take one, one Tylenol, just take one Tylenol. And he looked at me and he goes, do you have any uh, non-chemical alternatives? <laughs> yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. At least See, my open. kids. My kids don't, they'll come and they'll ask me for a massage. And I mean, and they're almost 10 and eight, um, but the massage will last about five, if I'm lucky, 10 minutes. Um, and then they're like, okay, that's it. And that's like back massage, foot massage, doesn't matter. That's all they need to they, reconnect and de-stress yeah. because they're programmed too, right? Yeah. And I mean, and they're still tiny. Like, yeah, <laughs> it doesn't take long either to go over a tiny back, a tiny foot, yeah. um, like whatever yeah. it is that they're wanting in that moment. And sometimes it's just um, that connection. Yeah. Yeah. Because, you so, know, we, those healing vibes. Yeah. That's my mommy's hand on me. Yeah. Everything's good. Oh, absolutely. No, I love it when they do ask. Um, But of course, usually they ask when it's like everything's set up for a client. And I'm like, not right now, buddy. (laughs) Yeah, no. I'm like, after I'll change all the sheets, I'll change everything and you can hop on and do 10 minutes, but give me an hour. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm, It's very much a case too of the cobbler's kids don't have shoes. Mm -hmm. 
you know, because we're tired, we give, 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 and then we get home yeah. and someone puts their hand up and you're like, oh, no, I'm tapped out, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's so. true too. No, that's great. Um, And so I know we've talked a lot about benefits, but it is. Uh, what about how like frequency? Is there too much? Is there not enough? And I know I find this, I get this question asked a lot by clients also. Um, I know part of it is financial availability as well. Um, Absolutely. But putting financial, well, it, I mean, you can't really put it aside, but what would be your top recommendations, I guess, on frequency? Okay. Client knows best. So let's say you eliminate the financial, they've got the money to do it. Um, theoretically, I had been told once that the benefits of a session last up to five days. And I know when I was teaching and I had bigger, more <laughs> frequent classes, I was having students come in to work on me three times a week. And that was too much for me receiving it. Yeah, I was, it felt irrit. it felt overstimul overstimulated. Yeah. Right. So again, clients know their body best. So if financial issues aren't an issue, try once a week. If you find yourself heading down the valley of ickiness, yeah. let's try three days, right? But definitely, like in China, their routines were if a client presented with an issue, <clears throat> 12 days straight. Really? Yeah. So, and you know, it was accepted in hospitals and it was done. Um but is it a full session? I have to wonder. I was say, is that like a full hour or is that? I don't know. Uh, I don't maybe like that part. A but I know minute. for me, three times a week was too much. Mm -hmm. I Like I literally was wanting to pull my feet away and say, no, leave me alone. Right. Yeah. I've, I've had enough. <clears throat> and and um, but clients know their body best. Like you get the phone call. Yeah, I really need to come in right now. They might have yeah. to come twice this week and then you might not see them again for a month. And you know what? To me, that's a good reflection of a client who's listening to their body. Yeah. And is part of a team approach to their health. Now, and I get that I'm, I'm someone who is usually pretty in tune with my body. Um, however, I know most people aren't. Um, I have a lot of people who kind of look at me as deer in headlights of like, just getting into complementary modalities, because they're finally, they're just fed up with Western healthcare yep. system. And so they have no idea what to do, what to expect, things like that. So if someone were like, if working on a specific issue, I know each issue is slightly different um, with the once a week for a few weeks and then come in for maintenance. Would that be something realistic? I think um, it would depend on the condition. Like, let's say yeah. if they had menstrual issues, <laughs> come in right before your period. Yep. Yeah. Right. Um, if they have headaches, if you think one's coming on, that's when to get in. And again, yeah. Let them, if if they have, for one thing, if they have the autonomy to book the appointment, you're less likely to run into cancellations, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. sometimes yes, yeah, sometimes no. I thought I find like my personally my own clinic, I go through waves of all of a sudden I would get so many last minute cancellations that I had to put in a whole cancellation like policy. you had to pay yeah. up front. I had a cancellation policy, but as a someone who's a giver and I I. Oh, okay, yeah. this is your warning. This is your warning. And then I just had to start collecting 50% or full payment up front um, because I got into a span of and, getting And good for you because, so you know, many. I mean, dental offices are doing it. Doctor's offices are doing it. Um, I'm like you, you know, a client would come to me and I really didn't charge my worth. Yeah, I still don't and, charge my um, worth either. <laughs> and then, you know, I'm a great conversationalist. So we'd be a half hour overtime. <clears throat> but that was one of the things that I brought with me from dental hygiene was I hated the clock. So I never booked clients back to back mm -hmm. because if I was having fun, I wanted to continue with this client. You know what I mean? To me, that's part of the joy of being self-employed is having these options. Yeah. And, um, but you do, you get, you get, um, or, you know, the thing is, is I, I had no problem saying, well, you didn't show up the last time. Um, if it happens again, I'm going to have to refer you to someone else. Mm -hmm. 
right? Take away the, take away the toy. There are yep. consequences. Mm-hmm. Oh, you want to pay me the full thing? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> I'll take the money. <laughs> you know, I'm not right? stupid. <laughs> right. I know it's something I always, and I mean this, we could do a whole episode on just oh, I know. etiquette of uh, being a, you know, an entrepreneur who works for themselves, the booking system, the, the policies, the, all of that it is. It's yeah. That can be a whole podcast episode in itself. Yeah. Um, so I know you've also so kind of get back now. <laughs> you were talking earlier about facial reflexology. Um, cause I know there's feet, there's hands, there's face, there's ears. Um, I think those are all the reflexology. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's reflexology, lymph drainage, which is okay. okay yeah. Specific. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But and for I mean, in general, get... treat the whole body. Yes. Those sorry, are, I, I meant treat the, the whole. Yes. Yes. Um, but there's a new one coming out now. Mm-hmm. Um, I did a course with Florence Cohen okay. um, over Zoom. It was more the theory introduction to osteopathic reflexology, which is fascial work. Mm-hmm. And the information was so interesting. Problem was to take the physical part of the course, I'd have to go to England. And mm-hmm. oh darn. <laughs> Mama don't have a sugar daddy. No. <laughs> And it was also yeah. the week, it was literally the week before the AGM uh, and I didn't yeah. want to get sick. You know how you come yes. home from flight and you get sick. Yeah. So I just said, okay, it's, I don't think it's meant to be right now, but it was that really heightened my interest. Yeah. I've done a lot of research into fascial stuff now. And I think that's where we're going to see a lot of work in reflexology in the future. Interesting. See, and I'm such a student, a lifelong student where I'm like, shiny object what please give me give me all the okay, shiny well, objects florence, florence is doing her course again in december uh, oh don't oh, tell my. me that don't tell me that that's great um it Good. is <laughs> i have i think i have like five courses right now that i'm oh i know i've got things to, to do like it's it's brutal yeah, uh, I but you. i mean i think that's part of anyone who's who's anyone into who gets any into alternative health field. yeah is going down the rabbit hole that's just it. We're always wanting to improve. We always want Constant. to support our clients to the best of our abilities, staying up to date in what's happening um, and just being able to support the best that we can. So I yeah, think it's pretty normal that most. Us with the questions, they feel they don't have time to ask yeah. their traditional medical practice. Yeah. You know, when you have a 15 minute appointment. Oh yeah. It's there's no time. One and, hour. and you can only talk about maximum one two thing so we, we can talk two things it's, with mine <laughs> oh no well the signs right there on the wall when you we can only talk about one thing and I go oh, I'm gonna die of, of right? information starvation right you know that doesn't work for me no but the other thing that was interesting you were asking about different types and I'm certified in foot that was the first and then I did hand and I yeah. was like oh I'm gonna really be bringing in the money now but I didn't find I had that many people who wanted hand reflexology. Mm -hmm. So people say, oh, so are you sorry you take it? Absolutely not. Because hand reflexology became my business card. I volunteer at the kids' school. The principal had horrible TMJ. And I worked on her hand, showed her the points, gave her some homework. She came in the following week and was bruised where she had done so much self-treatment but it helped her yeah and any afternoon I was there volunteering she was dragging this teacher that teacher this teacher into me yeah and so the hand reflexology was the business card the introduction and then they would book and you can a lot easier do hands at like trade show health events absolutely things like that like you said on the fly a little hand sanitizer and you're good to go yeah. Um, and people aren't as wary to give you their hand being like, okay, great. You want to work on my hand? Absolutely. Versus, oh, I have to take off my feet. I er, not my feet. I have to take off my shoes. I have to take off my, do my socks. feet smell. I didn't get a pedicure, all the excuses. Right? My nails are like, yeah. yeah. So no, it is a great way of introducing. And then once you have them hooked, then they're coming in for full sessions yeah. of, of feet or if they yeah. want hands, then absolutely. But uh, yeah. And the and other then, thing, I, like I never took a course in ear reflexology, um, but I, in, I introduce 
I introduce the ears, like we work the ears three separate times in the facial acuzone reflexology. And what I noticed was, I don't know how long an ear reflexology session is, but five minutes and these babies are burning and saying lay off. Okay, interesting. Right? So that's why in, fa in I'll call it phaser, facial acuzone reflexology, we do them, we leave them. Yeah. We come back later and we do them and then we leave them. Interesting. And then we come back. So it's more generalized. We're not going into specific points. Yeah. But we're still, you know, getting a lot of work done around the ears. We're still in there focusing on the vagus nerve and rebooting that. Yeah. So it's just, you kind of, you've got choices. Pick what suits you best. My mother-in-law has never let me touch her feet. She's got a foot thing. But I, yeah. the minute I took hand reflexology, she was the first pair there. Nice. Yeah. My father-in-law has never said no to anything. <laughs> <laughs> he just He's wants like, to yeah, be a guinea pig for it all. all. Yeah. Nice. So, nice. And it's now, nice to have options. Absolutely. Because now you teach facial. I do. So can you tell us a little bit more about that? All of the courses that I've developed over time, because I've got an assessment course, I've got a hot stone course. Uh, I did one supplementary techniques in reflexology. All of them arose from the fact that when I graduated, I took foot and I'm like, okay, what's next? Yeah. Okay, I'll do hand. Okay, what's next? <clears throat> and there was nothing. Yeah. There was absolutely nothing. And so, and my students were coming to me and saying, what's next? And I'm like, well, you know, I can't find anything. And so I decided to start looking into stuff and maybe creating my own you know, like extra techniques or something, but I lacked confidence. So I ended up actually getting my certificate in adult education. Mm -hmm. And that helped me learn about um, uh, measurable skills and rubrics and, and all of that stuff. And from there, I had the confidence. And so I developed advanced clinical assessment of the reflexology client. And, and then I was like, oh, I really, I want to do facial, but I never. So I took a facial course from another very popular person who had her own course got results. Mm -hmm. I highly recommend her course, but it was literally this. That was it. Okay. Like this. Yeah. And I wanted to include this. Yeah. All of the and neck, as the, a dental hygienist, it it because I mean the face is more than for those listening, not watching. Like it's more than just you know the forehead, cheeks down to chin. Right. It's your neck, the back, it's all front of, of your neck, side of your neck, that, back of your neck, back yeah. of the head, like everything. The lymphatics. Yeah. That right? to me that is when you say like I I I hear face, I hear head. Um, yes. Together and, because and the they interesting work together. thing was it was based on acupuncture points right? And the Indian Marma points, but I've mapped it in what Canadian reflexologists or North American reflexologists are used to. And that's the zones. Okay. That's nice. why I called it facial acu zone reflexology. So instead nice. of saying gallbladder two, stomach three, it's yeah. point 0.5. It's point, you know what I mean? It's just easier to find. Yeah. And there's no map. It's just the points. And you know okay. what? Not one client asks, what organ is that? No, I have a few every now and then. Just the odd one. They're like, oh, but for their face? That hit. No, sorry, not face. Just, on, oh, the, on the feet, feet hands, sure, all the time. Feet and hands, yeah. But, on, but quite frankly, once you get into no. the facial stuff, they're gone. They yeah. are, they've they tapped out. They, like, I've literally been spit on. You know, where someone's <laughs> like, and then they go, That's, That's okay, this reminds so me of dental hygiene now. That's so funny. The level and of relaxation, especially for those people who are stuck up here. Yeah, is they, it is when you're stuck in your head. And, yeah. and I always do find that interesting when I do like Ayurvedic Indian head massages because they're relaxed and they are, but it is, you're, you're saying that, but it's when I get to their face and start doing all of their face points and that they seem to go one level deeper almost. Um, they do. It's they're literally almost almost in REM some of them will fall asleep mm -hmm. um, but the other thing about it too and I don't know if you this is something I learned when I was a dental hygienist um, 
it can cause extreme anxiety in some clients when you're working their face. Mm -hmm. And I learned about this in dental hygiene because on the homunculus of the brain, which is our primary little guy, the mouth is very close to the sexual organs. Yeah. So I would often have clients, if I was cleaning their teeth, get teary eyed and they'd say to me, I don't know why, I don't know why. Well, possibly there was a history of something not so great happening to them in the past. And so I've had clients and I warn them of it, actually, if you feel uncomfortable at any time, I don't tell them what they're going to feel. Yeah. Because that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yes. But if you, you feel uncomfortable at any time, please tell me we can stop at any time because you never know what you're going to trigger. Yeah, no, that's very true. And it's, I never even thought of that because as I'm also trained as a doula, um, and there's a direct correlation to your jaw, like, and when someone is about to give birth, you need to relax your jaw to be mm -hmm. able to relax to birth. If you mm -hmm. are clenching your jaw, then your uterus and your vaginal canal is also going to be clenched. So it's always work the jaw, relax the jaw, and then birthing will be a lot easier. And, and, you know, I like, I've known that for years, but I've never made the connection well, to, I'm wondering like, with that too, if it isn't because anything. the jaw is so close to the vagus nerve reboot areas mm -hmm. and that vagus nerve goes right down in there, right? Yeah. So there could be that connection too. Science is yeah. just fabulous. I know. The body is so Miraculous. amazing how it's connected yeah. and it's like, you can't just look at one thing because it does, like it can, everything needs the other thing to be able to connect properly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um it's absolutely fascinating and that's why <laughs> I don't believe in working for a specific condition mm -hmm. no like even when someone comes in for one specific thing like you whole work the whole thing, thing. absolutely whole thing because yeah. no system absolutely. works independently of any other and yeah. it's not just working the foot and getting a reaction it's taking that hour which is why I don't like half hour sessions taking that hour to make sure that client moves from sympathetic to parasympathetic. Yeah. So that we have a no. good handle on healing. Oh, I love that. That timing is so important. I love that. Um, now, one thing that often I come across, and I'm in a lot of different groups for in the UK, and then also yeah. some Canadian, North American groups, that type of thing. And I find, I don't know if it's that side of the pond or what, but I find they use a lot of creams, a lot of bombs, oh, a lot yeah. of that type of stuff versus what I know when I was trained, I was trained not to use anything on the feet. When you do it at the psychology. end, I yeah, call at the I end call lotions, lotions at the end or kiss and makeup. Oh, if I like that. client has had an uncomfortable session because they're very stressed. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We're going to make it all better now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No, I always end every session and that's where I introduce um, my aromatherapy. I have the permission beforehand right. and I, that's where I use aromatherapy typically is at that, at the very end in the nice, okay, we're, we're done the heavy lifting. We're done the heavy work. Now let's do finish off with that little, little, any, what was any over the pond reflexology that I've ever watched stresses me out. <laughs> really because they're so fast okay <laughs> and they're and then slapping they've got the lotion here which affects yes. on another level i i they do it's people. here and then you go and then you just grab more and then you go and you grab more and then you go like uh, sorry that's <laughs> so unprofessional so to me i was like to me just like your hands as long as you as long as it's clean I wouldn't have no, an issue with there's it. There's no reason because for that. your have hands it on would a be gauze on your tray. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's no reason for it. But the speed was just so and I'm like, okay, no 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 no. Because my client's <laughs> brain <clears throat> is tuned into the speed of your thumb. Yeah. So my client's brain is keeping up with that. You know, that's why a lot of places, a lot of radio stations play slower music in rush hour. Okay. Right? Yeah. So that the cars don't speed because they're listening to some heavy metal. Well, that was before when you had radio stations. Now everybody can listen to what they want to. But, and the lotions too, because what is reflexology? It is a focused pressure technique. You mm -hmm. put 
oil emollient of any kind on there, you've lost the focus. Okay. It becomes a slippery pressure technique. Now, Tony Porter, who is a huge name in British reflexology, huge. And he's an advocate for um, just addressing the issue and moving on. And, okay. and I'll agree to disagree with him on that. And he used lotions and he literally just came out with uh, a little blog saying, whoa, people, the emollients were meant for if you ran into a really tough area to, okay. you know, get your work done in. They're not yep. meant for the whole foot. Okay. So he's even saying that's gone too far. You guys are, are crazy. I never... and. From an assessment point of view, I even prefer it if my clients come in and have not done a pedicure and have not moisturized their feet. Yes. Because I can read that foot for physical issues. Don't talk to me about reading for emotional. But um, I can tell where the foot imbalances are, right? And it tells me something. And the minute you add lotion, you lose so many assessment cues. So, so and I'm now, not a fan. <laughs> Good to know. Um, now what about, I had this happen actually this, this past week, someone came in and their feet were just so clammy. Um, we, we did have a heat wave, um, and it was just like, it didn't matter what I did. Yeah. Like, so I always do a wash off of the feet first and I dry them off, um, all of that. But then it's like, like it's I constant. could not move. I couldn't, my thumbs were sticking. Like I couldn't do anything to get anything because it was just so clammy and sweaty. And, and it was like, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. Odd and, you know, you do run into clients with hyperhidrosis and I find a lot of, uh, cause I've had students with it and a lot of them, they find it improves with regular reflexology. It doesn't mm. fix it hundred percent, but it improves, but that's the type of client that I would say, bring in a really thin pair of socks next time. Okay. Interesting. And let the socks be the Absorbed. absorbent. Otherwise, yeah. you've got your towel there under the feet, lift and wipe, lift and wipe, lift and wipe. Because yeah. that's another thing that I love. A lot of times when clients do transition, they get what I call a release. And, you know, my son, if he had um, digestive issues, you know, the stomach is bigger than the eyes are bigger than the stomach. Yes. And I would work his digestive reflexes and that whole area of the intestines would start to sweat nowhere else on the foot, just there. Interesting. And so I would point to, I feel, feel your foot, feel the difference. And yeah. I would see that with like some in the lungs, right? Uh, some in the dorsal chest and, and I go feel that. And they're like, well, that's sweating. I go, yeah, cause you're having a release here, yeah. right? So this is, this is a great sign. But with a client like that, it's more likely hyperhidrosis. Yeah, no, that's, that's those are but great some points. thin I know. socks, you know, from the, like from the dollar store. Yeah. And or even have a, a couple of pairs in your in office, office and then yeah. send them home with them. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then no, that's great. I know a few times in the past, I just so when I come into situations like that, because again, I don't use um, any lotion or balm or anything either during a session, only at the very end. But the odd time when I run into a client where it's, I just, I can't get a grip on their feet properly. I find I'll put a little bit on my hands. So exactly. not on theirs, just, exactly. a, just enough to coat my, my fingertips yep. kind of more than anything. And it just yep. allows me to get a little bit of that better slide and grip on their feet, yep. allowing me to get into those reflex points. Yeah. Um, and, and sometimes it's like, I'm only having trouble with this area. Yeah. Yeah. It's often not the whole foot. It's usually, yeah. I find That's it's usually the lungs, heel, right? The heel. Oh, see, I, I have so many clients. Well, yeah. Okay. The lungs. See so the lungs more so, and then the heel. Usually, the middle of the foot yeah, the is lungs. always the better part. Um, but the lungs is always a huge issue for. I can think of so many of my. Well, there's so much callousing there, and a lot of people. Yeah. 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 So, oh, interesting. The I just the whole thing is so interesting. And then you talked about also just reading the feet. 
Um, so I'm, I'm trying to be cognizant of time, but let, can, can we take a couple of minutes and just dive into, so actually like foot reading itself. So not even before you even start to get to the points of, you know, working on any points itself, there's a whole aspect of foot reading, um, that not everyone teaches in aroma in that aromatherapy schools, reflexology schools either. Um, I find it's something that a lot of people have to seek out additional education for that. Um, this so can you this is an area where I'm very outspoken mm -hmm. and um, like it's, I love it. it's created some issues. Um, I believe in assessment mm -hmm. as it comes to foot reading, knowing yeah. that the shoulder area could be a referral to the hip. So looking at the map and saying to yourself, I wonder if the corresponding organ to this reflex is an issue where my issues are are the foot reading for emotional or psychological issues. Okay. That's a hard no for me because I'm not a psychotherapist. Okay. And when you read a client's foot that way, and I have seen examples of these readings based on pictures and some of the comments have been heartrendingly offensive. Mm -hmm. And when you are trained to look at something and come up with a negative connotation for it, what are you going to do with that information? Mm -hmm. Are you going to say, this redness tells me that your father was abusive to you? Are you going to say that to your client? What benefit does that information have for the client? And at the same time, it's kind of poisoned you because you've made that jump. Yes. Uh, so and it's, it's so just funny the way you've just worded that because actually just this morning honestly I'm psychic. Half, <laughs> because about half an hour before we jumped onto this call together I was scrolling through uh, one of the groups and someone was saying that they knew someone who was trained of like this section it means asthma this section means this this section means that this section and it's like no you have asthma because you know and it was the whole you know the upper part of the foot the lung the chest all of that it was like you have to have asthma and the person didn't have asthma but they were like and and so it's and you like we don't diagnose we don't cure we don't do that type of stuff and what we do best is ask questions so the client goes home and does the research. Yeah. Right. And, and I mean, and we can definitely get some pointers in what might be happening, but I know because some people, especially when it comes to the heart, whenever there's like that, when they're like, oh, what was that? That was tender. And it was over the heart. I'm like, you could just be having an extra emotional day. Like, it does not mean you're about to have a heart attack. So please do not think you're, and I always say that. But I'm they like, always, you know, we always go to the worst place. We, it is. We're just wired that way. It I is. literally and read a, a gratitude book saying that we are hot, hardwired for the negative. Oh, and, so and so that's why we have to be so supremely careful because you say one negative and 13 positives and they're still over here where the negative was. They haven't even yeah. made it somewhere else. And so again, you know, we have to be so careful of the power dynamic with a client. Um, we ask questions. Have you considered this? Yeah. You know, that's even a question. Maybe you should research this. Yeah. Um, I don't even like in my, when I'm with a client, I want to turn this into a study, but I, I'm not really seeing clients much now. But I would love to have what's called a silent session. Mm -hmm. No maps, no nothing. You have your client's health record. You work the feet. You chit chat about your day and the weather, but no information, no feedback about what yeah. you're doing. And let's see what happens with that client. Yeah. Because there is, and again, this was not a happy discovery for many reflexologists. 30% of people are wired to have a placebo response. Mm -hmm. So 30% of your clients are going to have that response that you wanted, especially if you told them about it. So where's the science there, you know? See, and I love, I do. I love science. I'm a science girl. I, which is funny because as a teenager, I couldn't do science class. I know. Same um, here. But, <laughs> but as an adult, I'm like, yes, the science, the why, like the reasoning behind it. I love, um, but I'm also a huge fan of placebo. Honestly, 
Who I am. Who cares why it's working? Is it my, working? Are you feeling better? Let's continue. Who my cares? recommendation there with the silent session is more for scientific study, right? Yeah. Um, if you have a client that's peppering you with questions and wants that information, sure. If I were to do a silent session, it would be a scientific one and the client would be aware of it before they came in. Yeah. And they wouldn't be paying <clears throat> because that kind of exchange puts expectations. Yeah. So it would have no. to be a true scientific study. And that's why, like, you need the science behind it so mm -hmm. that when people are asking questions, you can back it up with what you're doing and why. Absolutely. Um, but I know I have a lot of people who are like, it's just placebo. And I'm always like, and if they're feeling better, I mean, if you don't want to trust the science had behind it, meds. Their fine. kidney hasn't had to process meds. Yeah. Um, it, it's just amazing. And, and, you know, a lot of the negative comments about reflexology from the naysayers and the skeptics have all been when they watch sessions and they hear the reflexologist telling the client everything they're going to feel and I can understand that <clears throat> and so all I'm saying is we need to find a balance and maybe have some sessions where we don't yeah. tell them everything that's going to happen yeah I usually you know? don't for myself, like my clients, I, unless they specifically ask like, Oh, that was a tender part. What was that? I'll tell them. And then I like, and that's it. Like, and that's fine. You know what? It's the, Oh, yes. I'm going to work this. You should feel really yeah. relaxed. Now you might feel this happening or that happening. No, 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 See, no, 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 no. I think part of that is the counselor part of me. Of uh, You don't want to plant seeds where seeds don't need to be planted exactly. necessarily like because it is we are you know like you said one negative comment um it's always if you if and because I worked with children for so long one negative comment usually it takes three to five positive comments to because you don't know the negative. type of ground you're putting that seed in <clears throat> exactly and as soon as you have a thought in your head that seed is planted it just starts to grow so when people and that was always a big thing that was taught to us through as a child and youth care worker that it was like you there's no planting seeds in certain situations mm -hmm. um and and you can't like because then it is you're just telling people what they should feel and then if they are more apt to feel that way which yeah. isn't what we want we want them to be able to do all that on their own well you want them to be like the primary thing is you're not coming to me for treatment you are coming to me i will provide a treatment but this disease this is yours to deal with yeah i am a facilitator in what i can do but ultimately don't hand it to me to take care of it for you it's still your issue so i'd rather be part of a team than, yeah. and not take over again it's that power thing right yes and unfortunately yes. a lot of reflexologists are um that's the word i'm looking for insecure they try to you know i'm a healer no you're not you know, yeah. like, and, and so we build ourselves up and, and they start throwing out, you have asthma. No, 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 no. Like, and I, I have an issue with that. It's like, let's respect this wonderful modality. Yeah. It's wonderful just the way it is. Yeah. And it's, and what we're doing is allowing the body to get back into balance, to do what the body needs to do. Yeah. I, I'm not the one who's doing anything to your body. Um, I am just, and We're I say that with aromatherapy too, um, We're you know, the reflexology or aromatherapy, it's, this is allowing your body just to come back into the balance. It's giving it that little nudge that it needs to do to maybe just do what it needs, what it needs to do. I'm not doing anything though. It's your body that is yeah. doing the work, not yeah. me. Yeah. It's yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, I could talk to you for hours and hours. Oh, on I know. This. That's why when you said, do you want? And I said, uh-huh. Now you know why. <laughs> I know. And I, and I want to get you back on too for to talk about gratitude because um, that I know gratitude is a big thing that you do. And I love doing gratitude. I do a lot of gratitude things. Um, I don't post it publicly like you do um, because we, we've had that discussion before where you talked at the CFA with that. Um, but I do, it's, it's another big thing. So I, I, we definitely want to get you back on to it and talk about that. Love to. Um, but before we part, any parting words for our listeners, last things you just, you know, want them to, to walk away with. Trying to think, what did I write about that? <laughs> I think, I think a pre, if you are already a reflexologist, go back to your textbook. 
and look at everything you learned. Mm. Try to recapture that sense of wonder that you had. Um, take courses because that will get you excited. I'm a huge proponent of continuing education. Mm -hmm. Does not have to be one of my courses. Find something that you're excited about, but please apply some critical thinking. What are you taking the course for? Enjoyment, yeah. fine, take whatever. You wanna build your practice? What's gonna bring in more money, right? I find there's been a trend in reflexology <clears throat> where everybody's become a cheerleader. Oh, that's fabulous. I had amazing results. And I try to replicate them and I go, oh, gee, I didn't like what's going on there. Like you don't, you don't have to be a cheerleader. You can ask questions. I think any professional worth their salt appreciates the questions. Yeah. Right. I don't want my students to be my cheerleaders. I want them to come and say, Sue, I have a problem. What about this? Like questions are what get me excited because then you know what I get to learn too. Yeah. So it's a, it's a double win and don't focus on the map so much anymore for yourself. If your client wants that information, fine. Focus on the feet. What are they telling you? You know, do your full routine and then go back in there to the stuff that, hmm, maybe intuitively you figured something's going on there. Maybe that's where the client was really sensitive. Maybe you have a client who is so stressed, everything hurts. And you know what? You throw that whole session out the window and you just do all relaxation moves. It's yeah. about bringing it back to what your client needs. Oh, right. That. And, and that intuition is strong. Oh. Um, I mentioned that like intuitively, like follow your intuition. Absolutely. It's I had, you know, cause there was a thing here about contraindications, right? Oh yeah. Yes. Is there a time that you shouldn't use reflexology? <laughs> I won't do it on a DVT, you know, deep uh -huh. vein thrombosis. Um, a lot of the don't do it ons are protection because yes. the reality is if a client, well, let's use pregnancy as an example. The client is pregnant, has a reflexology session, and has the misfortune to miss scary. They're going to look for something to blame. It's the nature of who we are. What odds it's going to be the reflexology they blame it on, right? Yeah. Now, my opinion is if that client is ambulatory and is walking on those feet, mm -mm. but Contraindications for me, like I had um, a client, she didn't tell me over the phone and she came and she said, uh, oh yeah, I'm doing IVF. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I hadn't done any training in it. I just, you know, my spidey sense. Well, I did oh, have really? Oh, see, and see that. I did have Those training. are the people I love because I've gone through IVF myself and I love working with people with IVF. Oh, but I, love it. I said, when did you have it done? She's like, three days ago. I said, I'm not touching you. I said, you go home and you put your feet up <clears throat> and you let that thing do its thing. Snuggle right? in. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and if you're not trained later, in it, absolutely. Yeah. Like, cause there are things to take in mind, keep in, keep in mind that are very, and, and just as someone who's gone through IVF and works with people who've gone through IVF, um, it's not something to mess around with. <laughs> no. And she it's, did not have a successful pregnancy. It did not take. So I know I would have been in that equation of why didn't it? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I have no problem. I'm not comfortable with that. I don't have enough information about that. This means more to you than this little reflexology session. So let's err on the side of this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And yeah. So. And I think that's super important of when you aren't comfortable working yeah. with a certain Refer condition. Refer out. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, cause I know like there's a lot of modalities I'm just, cause we were talking about pregnancy IVF that, um, it's once it's confirmed pregnant, when you've got that con confirmed pregnancy, then it's a different window of things that you can do. Um, cause I know like I work a lot with pregnant people because that's, that's my niche. That's where I love. See, and I, I'm also really thing. bothered by trying to induce pregnancy with reflexology. <laughs> I'm like, let mother nature do its thing. Yes. Um, like, I, I a hundred percent agree with that. Unless 
people are then talking about um C-section? inductions yeah see like if they are yeah. being forced inductions forced c-sections yeah then it's very different don't but, come you know, to me if you're just tired of being pregnant if you're 37 weeks and tired of being pregnant um no. i'm more than happy to give you a reflexology but it won't do anything yeah. to induce labor it won't yeah. like and and i'm like you have five weeks still five weeks at 37 weeks. Like it's a guest, it's a guest date. Um, it's not a due date. I refuse to say due date. Um, it's in years. Yeah. Cause it's it is a guest, guest date. date. Yeah. And you still have five weeks because you're still up to 42 weeks. You're yeah. Still and a, a lot of stuff pregnancy grows yeah. and gets finalized it's in that amount of time. So important in those last few weeks. Now, if baby wants to come natural on its own. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, those last few weeks are, there's a lot of development going on. Mm-hmm. And then baby's still cooking it in there. Um, yeah. don't, don't rush. Don't rush. I you know. just want oh, to bring that's... out a meat thermometer and put it near the uterus reflex and say, Oh no, it's not cooked yet. We're not at yeah. the right temperature. Oh. And as someone, as cause my last few pregnancies were surrogacy and it was, there was a lot of but when's baby, when's baby going to come? I'm like, baby will come when baby's ready. I'm sorry. Like I, I can't decide this. It's, and especially new moms, um, new parents. It's like, well, when's baby going to come? You can do everything under the sun. If baby's not ready, baby's not ready. If your yeah. body and baby aren't, aren't there yet, just relax, go home and relax. I know it's hard. It is hard. Been Sleep there four times. Now it's while hard. you can, <laughs> but it's, oh yes. Um, anyway, that's a whole other we can yeah. keep going on about that. Um, any other times that you shouldn't use it other than like when you're not comfortable, like you said, deep vein thrombosis. If you've been pressured to have an appointment by someone who's a fan, but you're not really on board. Ooh, I really? can't tell you how many times people who were trying to be my advocates. I've had people call me and say, Sue, this is my friend so-and-so. Tell her she needs a reflexology here. Okay. No, in that situation, I totally get where you're coming from. Although I could see, and I'm see, I was thinking of like talking to a friend being like, Hey, have you tried reflexology? Give it a try. If it's well, not I've your thing, don't do bring it again to their to appointments. I've had, Oh no, their you have to at least want it. I mean, and it's great it. to have that much of a fan, but no, 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 this might not be for this person. That's yeah. why we have other modalities. Uh-huh. You know, it's different strokes for different folks, right? Yeah. Well, I could, so. I just can't even picture someone oh, physically to forcing someone lot. in a car and bringing them. Interesting. A lot. Yeah. You know, I just, the people, I listen to my spidey sense. I've had some men that, um, I remember this lovely guy, he was lovely, but I refused to see him ever again because he had some misconceptions about what reflexology was because he said to me you don't have a massage table because I have a recliner and I'm like no and he goes oh well should I get into my underwear and I'm like hell no and because he went somewhere and had where she did a bit on his feet and then some on his shoulders and then some on his back and I said well that's not reflexology no that's a massage yeah and but he got great benefits from that yeah and, and I've also had men come in and ask me to show them the points to make their wife more interested. <laughs> and I've said, honey, a, that's a, that, that's a I can said, of honey, worms. you're talking to a woman and I'm more likely to show her <clears throat> points to shut you down. Yeah. You know, like, like go home and do the dishes and put the laundry away. And those no are going to be the points, right? Those How are about literally going food? to be the points. Yeah. yeah. Vacuum. Yeah. Do some meal prep on the weekends, right? Yeah. Take her stress level down yeah. because that's what it is. Bring yeah. her stress level down. Do things. Book her a few out. sessions. <laughs> Never mind you. You're fine. If that's right? all you're worried about. You're fine. Right? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, people are funny. The stories, the stories of reflexology. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Right. If people want to find you, get in contact with you, take one of your courses, where can people connect with you? Um, I'll stay away from the phone because I'm a horrible phone person. I shouldn't say I'm a horrible phone person, but, uh, you know, a lot of times I don't hear it because I don't carry it with me everywhere. So my web, my website is www.suetoddreflexology.com and, um, suetodd at suetoddreflexology.com for email. And 
Are you on Facebook, Instagram? I'm on Facebook, but on Facebook, okay. my business page is Sue Todd Readings Reflexology Aromatherapy. Yep. So because you do reading. And I, I gave up, I you know, I'm really pulling back on a lot of the social media because I spend more time getting unhacked, you know, than yeah. I do anything else. So I'm I'm pretty much just doing Facebook and LinkedIn. I'm Sue Todd on LinkedIn. Okay, great. Yeah. And yeah. we'll have all those links in the show notes. Also website Super. links. So, you, you know, if people want to check you out, um, take one of your courses, anything like that, because sure. uh, your courses are also online, if I recall correct. They're distance programs. Yeah. Um, so. so they're really designed for people who are self-motivated learners who don't need to be in a classroom. They are for people who are already reflexologists. So it's great for those who are geographically compromised. <laughs> or and, just people yeah. like me who, who I just don't have time. I don't have time I to have like ya. a specific schedule. I'm like, I don't have the time once a no, week. For I hear you. Weeks. That's like, exactly I, why. I'm I'm not a cookie cutter person. I scooch things in where I need to scooch things yep. in. Yep. And, and that's why these courses are like that. Because that's how I preferred to learn. So of course, yeah. I made my teaching material the way I preferred to learn. Yeah. No, that's how I am too. I love it. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining well, us you. today. I know we've gone over so many different things, but it was so worth it. it. <laughs> oh, it was, it was. And we can't wait to have you on again in the future. Um, so thank you everyone for tuning into this week's episode of Vetiver Vibes. Nikki here with Sue, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks. Thank you for spending your time with us here at Vetiver Vibes. This episode was brought to you by Accentria, a leading online aromatherapy school. Don't forget to check out some of our free resources at www.schoolofacentria.com. If you love this episode or you got a lot of value out of it, please make sure you share it with someone in your community who you think would enjoy it too. If you haven't already subscribed or reviewed the show yet, you can go on over to your preferred streaming platform and hit subscribe, then leave a review. This is the best way to help support us and we appreciate it. Email us with a screenshot of your review and we will send you a free guided meditation as our way to say thank you. This podcast is for information purposes only. We are certified clinical aromatherapists and holistic health professionals. If you have a medication concern, please refer to your health team. Everyone's health is unique to themselves, so the topics and suggestions stated may or may not apply directly to you.